on the day of Emily Good's arrest, um, some people may remember, some don't. I just want to put this out there because it's not a secret. In 04, I was arrested for, uh, for including uh, a, a police officer um, on, actually I'll say the name, Officer Thomas Rodriguez, who beat a mentally ill African-American man at the Wegmans, uh, used to be Wegmans, now it's like a price right or whatever, Wegmans on Driving Park and Dewey Avenues, mm -hmm. and he beat him to death. And it's caught on video, and it's on my film, RPD Badges of Dishonor, Corruption, and Murder. The man was pronounced dead less than an hour later at Rochester General Hospital after being beaten by Thomas Rodriguez and having all of, his, all of Thomas Rodriguez' weight placed on Thomas Rodriguez' knee, placed on the back of this man's neck, and the man passed away at the hospital less than an hour later. The Rochester Police Department has a long history of tolerating abusive, corrupt cops. One example of this is Lake Section's Thomas Rodriguez. Thomas Rodriguez is described by many who have been abused by him as a cop with an explosive temper who easily snaps and loses control. In one incident, Thomas Rodriguez attacked a man at St. Mary's Hospital. The man was handcuffed with his hands behind his back when Rodriguez lunged at him and placed his hands around the man's neck, choking him. Thomas Rodriguez is one of the cops involved in the Lawrence Rogers incident. In a home video shot by a witness, Thomas Rodriguez is seen resting all of his body weight on one knee on Lawrence Rogers' neck. So I was arrested in 04. It wasn't this big uh, as far as the publicity and, 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 and whatnot. In many ways, I credit that to, I, I believe YouTube was probably, maybe not even around, or at the very early stages, but I, I, I believe YouTube hasn't been around too long. And basically what happened was, when I saw Emily Good's case and when I communicated with her, I, you know, needed to give someone the same support that I received. Indie Media was great at supporting me. Uh, they showed up to my court dates and, um, and basically, which this cop filed harassment charges against me for including him on this video, a, a murderer, a cold-blooded murderer who was still patrolling our streets uh, and our citizens and who killed this man, uh, basically filed charges against me. So I was arrested, so I know what that feels like. I know what it feels to, you know, to be handcuffed, to be taken away from your family, uh, to be driven around, to be stopped somewhere for a couple hours, to make it as long as possible before you get to Central Book. And I know what that feels like. And that's why I came out uh, for, the, uh, for the rally. And subsequent to the rally, that's why I came out to the meeting, which everyone knows about the infamous uh, pink ruler ticketing incident, which the, the RPD sent out four or five uh, bully cops. Um, with their shades and their tattoos and their sunglasses on to ticket cars as a clear retaliation of, uh, you know, don't fuck with us. We're a brotherhood and we stick together. 12 inches from the curb. You have a ruler? Because I don't think this is 12. Can I see it? Can I see the ruler? Okay, that's 12 inches from the curb. Oh, about a half inch. Yeah, I guess it's about a half inch over, 12 inches. But yeah, the, the thing, we, I went to the rally, and at the rally, it had different emotions. It brought back memories of my dad. It brought back memories of how long has passed since my dad fought for a civilian review board, and how two decades later, later, literally, or just over two decades, we're still asking for a civilian review board. So it brought a lot of, a, a, a lot of emotions. So a lot of people were kind of standing around and just holding uh, placards up and posters, which is great. And I don't know, I felt the need to do a little bit more than that. And so I couldn't wait for whoever was using the bullhorn to get off it so that I get to get on. And a lot of my emotion and my passion and, and, and a lot of my stuff with my dad, it all came out. What about Officer Thomas Rodriguez? Get it right, Rodriguez. A Latino like myself who should be ashamed of himself. A Cuban just like me who knows what it's like to live in a police state of Cuba. Beating 30-year-old Lawrence Rogers at the Wegmans on Driving Park Avenue and Dewey murdering this man with his bare fist and all of his weight. I, I know what Emily's going through. Indy Media has always had my back, which is why I went and I supported her. And what do you think happens in the middle of a support meeting? Roll Rochester dirty cops show up and what do they do? They start ticketing with pink rulers, ladies and gentlemen. A law that is never hardly enforced in the city of Rochester, New York, or any other city for that matter. They measured my car. 
I guess I don't like to park close to the curb. What do you know? I was 12 and a half inches from the curb. Not 12, $35 ticket. And, uh, and I basically called it for what it is. It's, it's a corrupt department. It's nothing new. Uh, it just happens to be, uh, you know, a, a, a young lady who, who videotaped this and who it's blown up and went viral and that is the only reason why why it's so big and why it's worldwide and i mean that literally mm -hmm. worldwide mm -hmm. uh but what happened was i guess a uh, a not so happy camper and all this who is bob lonsbury who we have some personal dealings in the past when i exposed him when he called former mayor uh, william johnson who by the way i never supported johnson and never cared for his politics from the uh from the uh, disastrous fast ferry on down to all of his blueprint for change that he ran on. I think Mayor Johnson was a hypocrite. Uh, he actually wrote me a letter saying that he disagreed with my views on the police department. Uh, so so I'm no fan of Mayor Johnson, but, uh, but I am a fan of calling something like I see it. So I had no qualms about it um, to basically denounce Lonsbury's comments of Johnson a few years back, calling him a monkey, playing monkey sounds from the zoo. And which was literally a, an attack on the fact that Mayor Johnson was uh, African American. Uh, so while I didn't support the mayor, I ran out and I was one of the first ones to denounce and to protest outside the Wham offices at Midtown Plaza uh, with posters. And they tried to arrest me, and they weren't successful. And Wham let uh, Lonsbury go, of course, in a PR move. And then they rehired him in about a year later, almost to the day. So it's it's not a surprise to me that Bob Lonsbury, interestingly enough, on his radio show, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, on his radio show, which is on 1180 Wham AM station, um, he put me basically blasted me. He put me down on the show, and actually on the on the website, which is BobLonsbury.com or Lonsbury.com, I'm sorry, he wrote what is titled a note to Mayor Richards, and obviously that being our current mayor, Tom Richards. Hmm. Um, so basically, it's interesting, and people can see this, all they have to Google is a note to Mayor Richards, uh, or a note to Mayor Richards slash Lonsbury, um, and they can see it for themselves, so I'm not going to take the time to read it all, but I just want to point out some, th some stuff. It basically starts out him telling Mayor Richards that, um, you know, I presume when I speak about your military service, being in Vietnam, making reference to Mayor Richards being on the swift boats, knowing what it is uh, being, to be ambushed, to be attacked, to be on the lookout for around that river bend. And basically he says, sir, you're taking fire. And two of the people that are uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, letting fire out on you is um, David Vara and Howard Eagle. So he goes into my background. Um, you know, that doesn't concern me. I mean, I've been discussed on just about every radio show. My work has appeared, you know, nationally, internationally. I've received letters from the UK. Uh, you know, what I mean, people uh, uh, praising my work, so that that doesn't matter. Actually, I, I actually like the fact that I'm on his his show, um, in the sense that I'm kind of honored that Lonsbury, you know, who's a total whack job, would actually, you know, put me on the show and and uh, not put me on the show, but talk about me. So so I got a kick out of that. But on a serious note, and it shows you how delicately some people, I wouldn't be able to do that. Some people are allowed free range and basically, you know, the right to take it right to the edge, right to the edge. And notice the contrast. I was arrested, charged, and basically forced to take an ACD and had a, had a judge, Stephen Lindley, by the way, who was a former DA and has, has that prosecutorial blood, as opposed to Judge Elliott, who I believe is a very fair judge and is actually, interestingly enough, a former public defender. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so Stephen Lindley actually granted a, an order of protection to Thomas Rodriguez. So a cop had an order of protection against me for six months, and I couldn't, you know, basically get away from this charge or face a year in jail away from my kids. So I took the uh, the ACD, the plea agreement. But it's interesting how Bob Lonsbury seems to be untouchable, um, and he truly does. By the way, I've reached out to Wham Thirteen concerning this letter, and Channel Ten, and they both told me. I don't know, Davey. I don't know. He works with us. We're affiliated with him. I, I really don't know if we can do this. So it's scary. It's scary how certain people, you know, almost have like this, you know, like this free pass. Mm -hmm. So the letter, while I'm not concerned about Bob Lonsbury personally, okay, I, I, I literally laugh at him. 
I am concerned about what the message he's putting out there, uh, which instantly enough is, we'll get to that in a little while, is the message that Mike Mazio, a very interesting name, keep that in mind, um, has put out there and try to flip this. Notice how everybody's trying to flip it. Uh, you know, the fact which is Emily Good's rights were violated by a rogue cop, uh, by a bully. Um, so everybody's trying to flip it, and it's interesting that Lonsberry is getting away with the fact of he's basically threatened me on a letter, on his website, and on his radio show. And people can read it on their own, but he basically tells the mayors, wake up, you're being ambushed, fire back. Um, he goes on to name me by my name and go into my history. And uh, then he says, um, I recommend you attack. Again, this is Lonsberry addressing the mayor. Um, charge the guns. Okay, he's basically insinuating uh, pretty clearly to the mayor and the RPD to basically come after me, mm -hmm. to charge the guns to come after me. Um, in one part, he goes on to say, um, you know, make this tactical. It's interesting. I've heard the word tactical a million times in my life, and yet I don't think I've ever found myself looking it up on Merriam-Webster's dictionary. And I did that this morning before the interview. And the first definition that comes up, interestingly, is weaponry, uh, utilizing and using weapons, uh, battlefront is mentioned. So definitely kind of violent terms, mm -hmm. definitely aggressive terms. Um, so I, I thought it was interesting to point out this letter and to document it if, if something, uh, in case something, you know, did come of it in case uh, some of his uh, very, uh, you know, interesting characters that follow Lonsberry and that support him, uh, you know, they're gun happy, um, you know, think Obama is the antichrist kind of crowd, mm -hmm. uh, you know, happen to act on any of, of these just awful things that have said in the letter. And he's smart. He's a very smart individual. He's taking it right to that edge where basically, you know, he could absolve himself, I'm sure, of any of anything, if, if any of the media did point the finger back at him, like, what does this mean? I'm sure he would, you know, uh, um, chalk it off to, um, to you know, to creative expression or whatnot. But, but I thought it was interesting, you know, how somebody who was known to use the airwaves in Rochester to incite uh, and spread his nasty, racist, just hateful uh, uh, spew, um, and he's known for this. I mean, he's actually known for this. So... You know, he probably should be cutting me a check at this point because I'm actually doing what Lonsberry uh, loves, which is have people talk about him and create a stir. And, you know, normally I wouldn't, but the fact that I am a single dad of three beautiful kids, the fact that I am a family man, um, and the fact that this is something that's very real to me and, and, and has touched my life personally, and that's why I'm so passionate about it, is why I am talking about an individual who otherwise normally I wouldn't even give the time of day to. But um, he's basically threatened me. You know, he's threatened my life and threatened my safety. And he's encouraging the mayor and also loosely encouraging anyone else right, his that audience. wants to take his audience, yeah. that wants to take the law into their own hands to come after me. And, and those key words, charge the guns, uh, I recommend you attack, make it a tactical move, are very interesting. And, and he's really taking it to the edge. So, it, it, of course, it concerns me. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, it obviously concerns me and it, and it should concern uh, anyone out there. This is a man who every day, I believe, I'm not sure I don't really listen to a show, but I believe at least weekdays, you know, his voice is on the airwaves. And um, and by the way, there's numerous uh, businesses that support him, which in the in the past I've tried to, uh, to get people to boycott, and we're going to see if we can do something about that coming up soon. Uh, but there's a lot of business. Just go on to Bob Lounsbury Show, uh, Wham, 1180, and you'll see all the local businesses, by the way, that are affiliated and, and support this man knowing who Bob Lonsberry is. Uh, and by the way, those that have watched or will watch uh, or are interested in watching my uh, second film, RPD Badges of This Honor, Corruption, and Murder, uh, a 14-year-old uh, who was executed by two RPD cops, uh, uh, Serge Sa Savichev and, um, and, and Padgham, uh, basically... Bob Lonsberry left a letter at this young man's memorial on the corner of Girton Place and Park Avenue. Some in our community added insult to injury with their mean-spirited and racist comments against Craig Hurd and his family. This letter, 
written by Bob Lonsberry of WHAM Radio, was left at the street corner memorial for Craig Hurd on Park Avenue and Girton Place. In the letter, not only does Bob Lonsberry wrongly blame Craig's parents, saying that there were no values, no love, but he also states that Craig was raised like an animal, cursed from birth. In one part, he writes, Craig was genetically a man, but socially a wolf. And he goes on to say that young Craig wasn't loved from birth. Lonsberry's statements, they are groomed as predators from their very earliest years, shows his racist views. Lonsberry's comments are mere assumptions later proven wrong. He knows nothing about Craig Hurd or his family. Bob Lonsberry's statements are meant to be hurtful, comments such as bang, bang, dead as hell, referring to the RPD shooting young Craig twice in the head, are repeated throughout the letter. He refers to the Hurd family's genuine pain over the loss of their loved one as crocodile tears. He wrote the most mean-spirited, nasty letter saying bang, bang, dead as hell to a young man that was killed, head slumped over the wheel, the, the wheel of the car. Uh, he went on to say there, T-H-E-Y, possibly R-E, uh, meaning a group, there raised as wolves from birth, which obviously was re referring to the African-American uh, community. Um, and he got away with it. And thanks to me, not to toot my own horn, but when everybody was scared to, to do this, I exposed this man in my 2003 film, R.P.D. Badges of Dishonored Corruption and Murder. So it's not a surprise. Uh, you know, he even said that this mother, who people can clearly see on my video crying, you know, uh, her eyes out over the death of her son, over this devastation of, of losing, a, you know, her, her flesh and blood, uh, he basically went on in his letter to say her tears were crocodile tears. So just the most mean-spirited, insightful, hateful human being, Bob Lonsberry. So it's nothing new um, to him. It just concerns me the message that he's, that he's pointing out, which, interestingly enough, Mike Mazio is concerned about, about the message that this officer's address and this publicity on this officer's actions may bring to other officers. So it's, it's a double standard. Here is Mike Mazio's history, and, and, and I should have done this at the beginning, but I want to thank you. I want to thank Indy Media, and I want to thank everyone, the, the support I've gotten. There's always the few people that do not surprise me. Frankly, I would be surprised if they, if they didn't do what they do. There's always the few with the threats and the put-downs and whatnot. But overwhelmingly, I mean, the support has been great. I was in Florida, and I was getting support, you know, texts and emails. It's been, it's been absolutely wonderful. So I want to thank you guys for allowing me not only to voice and, and, and express myself, but especially for this part right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I really love to do. I love to expose somebody for who they really are. And everybody, uh, even Emily Good, which I totally support, and it's not her fault, she just doesn't know the history, you know, hasn't been in Rochester a, a long time like I have. There are so many people that have went on the national media and yet don't know who Mike Mazio, don't have a clue about who he is or his background. Here's who Mike Mazio is. Mike Mazio is a former Rochester police officer, a patrol officer. That means Mike Mazio at one point worked in a blue and white car, like you see the RPD use every day. Um, he also, at one point, um, changed positions from a patrol officer to what back in the late 80s and early, early, early part of the 90s, they referred to as the Hit Squad, okay? Um, the Hit Squad was what we nowadays call, okay, jump out. A lot of people will recognize the word jump out. Uh, by the way, they, not that a lot of people are surprised that they're unaware of this, they roll around in a white Ford van. Uh, they wear the ski mask. There's usually seven to eight to 10 of them in the back. They're the ones that uh, uh, do the drug bus and raid the drug houses. At one point, Mike Mazio was a hit squad member for the Rochester, New York Police Department. Um, in the late 80s to early part of the 90s, there were several cases uh, of police brutality and abuse and questionable shootings and abuses by the RPD, like has been the case with the RPD, because that's basically their history. Um, at one point, 
in the very early part of the 90s, I believe 90 or 91, uh, Rochester, former Rochester police chief Gordon Erlacher. A lot of people, again, familiar to Rochester, having been born or raised here or lived here for many years, will instantly remember Gordon Erlacher. He's the former chief of police who embezzled over $220,000 from within his own police department. And basically, he, um, along with other officers, were indicted on several charges, including uh, charges of uh, civil rights violations. One of the officers that was charged, okay, along with and around the same time as Gordon Erlacher, was Mike Mazio. Mike Mazio, as part of the hit squad, um, which I believe included, I believe it was at least four to five to possibly six. It was several officers, and Mike Mazio was one of them. He was uh, accused of some of the most horrendous, just awful acts, um, not only individually, but as part of this hit squad group of the RPD. Uh, some of the, uh, you know, allegations included, uh, you know, breaking a young man's uh, forehead uh, against a toilet in a bathroom uh, at his home on the east side. Another one was um, taking electrical cords, electrical extension, and they literally tortured uh, drug dealers, suspected drug dealers, by connecting one end to the wall and the other end basically making it a live wire uh, exposed and shocking, uh, you know, uh, drug suspects while they were handcuffed, stomping on handcuffed suspects, um, humiliating handcuffed suspect, throwing handcuffed suspect down the, down the stairs, um, a bunch, and by the way, all this is, is public information, you can go to the library, you can look this up, you can see who Mike Mazio was. So um, the, the culmination of the case is that he hired some very well-known, very powerful attorneys that are known to be uh, cop attorneys, police attorneys that specialize in defending uh, uh, law enforcement uh, officials. And um, while Gordon Erlacher was convicted, um, several, I recall if it was all of them or not, of the hit squad members were found uh, not guilty, were acquitted. Mike Mazio was one of them. But there you have it. That's Mike Mazio's uh, history. And what happens is people, you know, I guess we're all guilty of this some way, shape, or form. We all have very short-term memory. And we forget. And I don't know if I doubt that I'm the only one that sees this guy up there talking like he, like we say in Spanish, like he doesn't break a dish, like he's an angel, like he's got this aura just circling him. Um, he's actually a very shady individual. Uh, believe me, I know a lot of stuff personally about Mike Mazio, which... I'm going to keep some of the stuff kind of close to the vest, uh, but he's, he's, he's a dirty, dirty cop. Uh, while he was on the road, um, he did some very, very questionable things. And Mike Mazio knows what I'm talking about. Uh, let's just say he, he had a way of alerting certain people of uh, certain things that were coming down the pipe at them. Uh, wink, wink. And he had a way of uh, kind of telling them, listen... Uh, chill out for a while, lay low for a while, there's a lot of stuff coming at you, for, you know, so just chill, you know, bounce, like we say, leave town for a little bit, so Mike Mazio knows what I'm talking about, so, and we can go there, I mean, we can make another interview and I can come out, you know what I mean, and, and say these things, I have no problem, uh, but I like to give kind of people opportunity to put the brakes on, and I guess if I had one thing to say to Mike Mazio is, Mike, Stop spinning, for real. Stop spinning, stop hiding, stop doing the same thing that Ronald Evangelista, your uh, your uh, former uh, uh, boss there before you took the reins. Uh, stop spinning things, you know what I mean? Stop, um, stop turning this into officers are being threatened and all of a sudden the poor officers. Um, take accountability uh, for your department, for as union president, like we say in Spanish, have the cojones, okay? Tighten your belt, put your man boots and your man pants on, and go to work, you know what I mean? Um, and, and, and call it what it is, you know what I mean? Stop putting on the game face, because you and I both know that's a game face, that's a PR face. You and I both know that there's officers in your department, just like Shepard knows, just like Thomas Richards knows, that are ruining what you guys are trying to do, that are ruining and making your job harder. So stop putting this thing that a department of 700 plus officers are all saints because they're not. And they're actually in turn making your job harder, okay? So at some point, Mike, whether you get home, 
to your wife and kids or your family and you have a beer and you relax and you say, these fucking cops, I mean, what are they doing? Be real about it. Stop putting on their face. Stop spinning. There's no threats being made. Uh, you know what I mean? Stop spinning because you're great at it and we get it, but you truly don't even believe your own shit. Okay? So so stop it. And um, and, and I just want the people to know who Mike Mazio really is. You know, I'm in Florida and I'm seeing stuff online about this man, you know, with his officers all around him. Uh, you know, uh, um, and, and it's just, it's pure theatrics. The agenda from Mrs. Good confronting our officers on that night has led to serious concerns for the safety and the welfare of our officers who serve this community. Union President Mike Mazio. Just like with Lonsbury. I mean, I, I actually, in many ways, have to say that these are these are trained individuals. Here's Lonsbury saying that for the past 20 years, uh, me and my dad were, have basically been the most prolific and the most passionate uh, anti-police activists in Rochester, New York, which... I actually thank you for that. That's actually a good segue to, to who Davy V is. But but here's the thing. They're, they're all spinning. And what I mean is that, just as Lonsbury, Mike Mazio did a great job. He really did a great job. If I was like a PR expert, okay, or specialist, I would actually give him a, a high ranking on the job that he did. Um, he had all the police officers around him. If you notice something that he did, which was great, it was a great job, Mike, it really was. He had him there without uniform, mm -hmm. which automatically eliminates any kind of animosity, any kind of defensiveness that the average viewer or public would have against a person in a uniform. Um, we all know that the Rochester police are definitely not the most popular individuals on the face of the earth nowadays, especially recently. So let's put them up there with no uniform. Let's not put them up there with their brass, with their badges, with all their medals, with their I IBM number, you know, with their guns, with their belts, with their mace, with their taser. No, no, no. Let's put them there in shortcut t-shirts. Let's put them up there in pullovers like the average citizen that we would see at Walmart when we go shopping. Let's, um, let's put them there like that. And let's not, you know what I mean, in any way, shape, or form, uh, make it look, you know, any intimidating. And then let's, let's also... Um, put, let's also sprinkle it, sprinkle the background with a couple of token uh, minority officers, or I believe just one, I believe I just saw uh, one African American officer, a shorter officer in the back, and uh, so let's do that, let's not only, you know, try to humanize these cops a little bit by putting them in civilian clothes, but let's also sprinkle the background a little bit, or at least one guy, let's get one black cop in here to make it look like, you know, like we're all represented here. Um, it's funny, I didn't see the Latino and I'm surprised they didn't grab that one Asian cop that I'm sure they have somewhere on the force. Uh, I believe they have an American Indian cop on the force. So, so it's funny that they, they didn't do that, but it was a very good job. I'd probably give them a B. If he would have put the Asian and maybe a, uh, a uh, American Indian or some Latino officer in the back, then he would have done a better job. But the one black guy, definitely. I definitely got the message that we're well represented and that since this was, the basis of this was an African-American racial profiling stop, uh, yeah, let's definitely put the black cop right there. Let's not put him to the side. Let's put him in the back at the 12 o'clock position that a viewer, unless he's dumb, deaf, and blind, will not miss that there's a black cop here. Uh, you know, I love hip-hop, and for the hip-hop heads out there that are watching this, and remember Ice Cube, and remember N.W.A., and remember songs like Who Got the Camera by Ice Cube and Fuck the Police by N.W.A., and also remember a song, um, actually a verse, in Fuck the Police, which is black cop showing out for the white cop. And that's what I thought of that officer right there. I'm like, I'm like, dude, are you serious? Like, for real? Like, like you're going to have the audacity to let this man, Mike Masio, and let a police force who really, truly probably doesn't even care about you at the end of the day, being a minority, you yourself, and putting your life on the line for these other officers, um, you're really going to let them puppet you and use you like that for what? For like 30 grand a year that you get? That is sad. That really is sad. So what I think of it is he actually did a pretty good job. You know, uh, absent of the stuff that I mentioned that he left out, I, I think he actually did a pretty good job. And, and I laughed because I was like, I couldn't wait to really say who Mike Mazio is. Mm -hmm. and, um, and another thing I want to hit on real quick is 
it's interesting that the first time that I really, I've known of Mazio for years, obviously, for decades, but the first time I saw Mike Mazio take the helm and take charge was at a press conference at Rochester General Hospital several years ago. I believe it was like the wee hours of the morning uh, and innocent. And I want to make this clear for everybody that thinks Davy V is this anti-police, cop-hating machine, rah, 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 um, a very innocent officer who, who I'm convinced had nothing to do with, with the sad thing that, that happened to him, uh, uh, Anthony DePanzio. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know this about me, and, and I bet the RPD doesn't know me, and I can prove this. I have video from News 8 and other news. Um, I stood out on the corner of the public safety building by myself, lonesome just me, with a, with a poster board, um, you know, denouncing the, the, what happened to Anthony DePanzio. And I bet a lot of our people would be shocked, like, wait a minute, he actually supported us? And I did. And a lot of officers read my poster as they were leaving the street, the, the headquarters, and they gave me thumbs up. And the reason I did that is because what happened to, to DePanzio, I believe, was just, you know, completely disgusting. But what they missed, and the media missed, and of course they edited it out, is interestingly enough, I went there to point out two things. As a father of three kids, I went there to denounce this act on this innocent police officer who truly had nothing to do with it. But one of the most important things I went out there to do was to show how the cause of Anthony DePonzio's tragic event was his own police officers, his own brothers and sisters in black and blue, okay, or blue, whatever you want to call it. And, um, and it is, it's like the police are known you saw it the other day. You got three officers, you got two minding their business, totally not concerned for their safety because there was no issue about their safety. Totally not concerned. If anything, right about now, they're probably, excuse my language, they're probably motherfucking this, this Masic, Mario Masic guy for even having, you know, being a part of this video which has gone everywhere. Excuse me. So what you have is that too often the police are escalating okay and creating completely unnecessary situations like they did with 14 year old Taekwon Rivera okay who was humiliated who was assaulted jacked up and jacked up off his bike okay laughed at by road cops not the Ponzio the Ponzio is not even in the picture at this point okay completely humiliated does that mean that I approve of a 14 year old going to an attic or going to an upstairs of his house and getting a 22 rifle and shooting his officer? Absolutely not. I don't condone that. But don't miss the point here. The Ponzio's fellow officers, in many ways, ironically enough, possibly the same officers who helped save his life by rushing him to, to general, which even the doctors credited that for the swift response for being the fact why he's alive, you know, God bless him. Interestingly enough, his same officers, who maybe perhaps played a part in saving his own life, also played a part in causing this incident, okay, which led to this 14-year-old having so much of this, you know, pent-up anger and frustration, and in large part because he was just manhandled by bully RPD cops, and he ran upstairs, and in a fit of rage, okay, again, this is all happening in two or three minutes, people, oh my God, he's the devil, he's a killer, no. Okay, he's a young man who had a troubled past, like many other young people nowadays. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, a young man who was humiliated and mistreated and abused by RPD cops, who basically, in a fit of rage, in a, in a, in a blind few minutes, basically did something to an innocent officer, an officer who had nothing to do with the situation, who actually, and it's all on court documents, who actually came upon the scene after... Taekwon Rivera was already abused by other RPD cops. So the Ponzi, I want to make it clear, in no way, shape, or form had anything to do with this. But again, another example of how by some cops, okay, bad, corrupt, and rogue deeds, another officer can suffer like the Ponzi. And it's very sad. And you would think that from a, from a point of view of a corporation, which it is a corporation, the city, they would think and they would notice. Not only do they open themselves up to liability with cases such as Emily Good, not only do they do they take 20 steps back 
for maybe one step forward that they claim they take in building better relations with the community. So they basically piss it all away. And they're causing a situation where more and more and more, like Adam McFadden said, the people, the citizens do not trust the police. It's, it's, it's clear. It's like doing a homework assignment with your nine-year-old and he's misspelling the word apple. And you're telling him you're misspelling it. No, this is how you do it. You're misspelling it. It's clear. You would think that it would be clear to the mayor, to the chief of police, something is wrong with your department. McFadden said it. Maybe you'll listen to him since he's part of the system. Something is wrong. It's falling apart. Your cops are out of control. You, sir, have no control, Mr. Shepard. You, sir, have no control, Mr. Richards. You, sir, Mr. Mazio, are a good spin artist. Face it. Your department is out of control. It has been out of control. The Emily Good case is nothing new. Nothing new. It's been happening for years. And it will continue to happen. And maybe it will happen to the next soul that gets out there and videotapes a police officer. And maybe, God forbid, this time will be worse.